Mobster HQ, who is speaking? Who is this? Zed? Zed, is that you? Are you in danger? Where are you? Say that again? You're 150 kilometers from Vancouver? On a line string that follows the highway past Hope? Got it! Let's go! Let's get to it. We got a cat out there lost on the highway. God knows how we got there. We don't have time for that now. We got to jump in. We got to use some spatial analysis to save the day, help Zed restore peace to this world. So first, we're going to be using Turf in order to do this. Turf is our awesome JavaScript spatial analysis tool. Completely blows away having to do all this kind of stuff in pure math yourself. So Turf is what we're going to use. So let's get started. So first of all, we're gonna throw a map together on the page. We're gonna, so we can visualize all the stuff we're doing and get figure out where we have to go to find Z. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to the Mapbox site, this simple tutorial, display a map. We're gonna copy it, drop it into here. There we go, we got our map loaded. Now if I load up my temporary uh, HTML here, there's our map. Okay, next thing we gotta do is that Z said that he was 150 kilometers on a line that follows the highway from Vancouver to a little past a town called Hope. So in order to find that line, we need to find the line of the highway. And this could be a bit of a complicated thing. How are we gonna find that? So one easy way to do this is to use a directions API to give us the directions that you would need because the directions API gives you a line that indicates where you're going to have to drive. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Mapbox playground for directions. And here you can see I've already put in my parameters. I put in Vancouver here as my starting point, and I put in Kelowna, which is just another town that's on the same highway, uh, as the end point. And this is a really awesome little playground, and here it gives me the URL that I need in order to uh, request this same directions, okay? So this is gonna give me back a response like it gives me here, which is fairly complicated. Uh, and we're gonna look at it in a little bit more detail and break it down. So, but this gives me what I have to do with my fetch call. So my next step here, and I'm gonna be copying over code because I've already done up this thing. Uh, I'm just going over the play-by-play -play after for you. I've already saved Zed, spoiler alert. I uh, have to do this after the map loads so that we're gonna be able to add all the things onto the map we want. So going there and doing on map load, and then there's a fetch call. We're gonna close each of these just to make sure this will work. There we go. And once we do that fetch call, let's take a look at what we get back. So let's load up our console. And here we are, we get it back. And we have routes. So the routes, we're just going to look at the first one, gives us a geometry here. So what we can do to test this, we can grab this geometry and stick it into geojson.io. It also gives us legs. And legs are individual, are collections of individual steps along this particular route. And there's all kinds of steps. You can see here it kind of gives very specific directions or places that these are going to happen. So let's first of all test this overall geometry. And we're going to go to store that object as a global variable, copy it, and that adds it to our clipboard. Now we can go to geojson.io. And we're going to draw a quick line string. There we go. And replace the geometry bit. And here we get, uh, we can see this line starts. And there's our line going all the way from Vancouver to Kelowna. And we can see it's fairly rough. It doesn't exactly follow the highway. So for our spatial analysis, this could be a very good approximation, but it might not be accurate enough to actually find Zed if we're trying to find him in a very particular uh, location, not just an area. So in order to get that more specific one, we have to dive into the other part of the uh, response here, which is these steps. Now each of these steps has its own little geometry. So you can see here in this first step, there's another geometry. So let's copy that one and see what happens when we put that in geojson.io and see if it's more detailed. So here we're going to create another little line and then we'll replace that geometry with our others. So it was the first step, so it'll be right at the very beginning. And we can see here it's added this kind of U-shaped um, line 
that actually really closely follows the road. It's right literally in the middle of the road, and it's a much more detailed line than this one, which was a very broad approximation that actually went right through City Hall building. Okay, so that's really helpful uh, to know that that's more detailed. So now in order to get these both onto the map, we can get the rough route, which comes first here, and we're gonna copy that over. And basically all I do, you can see here, I just take the response and find the specific geometry and drop it in. And then we can also get the legs GeoJSON, which comes from all the legs. And I don't just grab that and stick it into the geometry. Instead, I create a whole set of features, each of which is made up of an individual set of geometry. So this route, this GeoJSON is one feature that is the whole line, and this GeoJSON is a whole bunch of features, which is every leg. So now that we put those on there, we can um, then add them to the map. So we'll just hop here and we'll add them to the map using our add source and add layer, uh, which you can see in other videos where I go over how to do all this stuff in Mapbox. Just look at the tutorials. And we can see here I add the leg line and I add the route line. Okay, great, so if we load these, uh, we now have those hopefully on the map. So I have to zoom out, go over, where are we? There we are. Okay, so there's our lines on the map. And we have our blue line, which is made up of all the legs, and the red line, which is made up of that broader uh, route. So you can see how the blue line much more closely follows. It's much, much more accurate. So for our type of spatial analysis and finding Zed, it's going to give us a lot better chance to find the really specific place where he's lost on the highway. So coming back to this, one little use of turf just to throw in a little bit of extra bonus here when it comes to using turf is B-Box. So B-Box is bounding box and a bounding box is a rectangle that contains all the features that you give it. This is really, really helpful when it comes to zooming maps to the right place. So in this case, I'm gonna give my bounding box the route GeoJSON, so that broad GeoJSON that we got, and then tell the map the map box map to fit those bounds. And I also give it a little bit of padding so it's not like completely tight in it. And I give it a duration of zero so it happens instantly. So this way when we load the map, it'll load and it'll immediately jump over to that uh, other location. Okay, it didn't do it. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I need to include turf in the, in the web page, of course. So here where we have getting started with turf, I can grab this script and in this script I can drop that up at the top and when we load it now it actually has the turf method and you can see it immediately jumps over and reorients our map really awesome use of turf something i use all the time so after this we got to actually do our spatial analysis where is z we need to use the along method which is what we're going over in this video the along method takes a line string and returns a point at a specified distance along the line so now we have our line and now we can, and we have our distance, we know it's 150 kilometers, so we can get our point. So we're gonna do it in two steps. First, we're gonna do it with that broad uh, approximation, which is a very easy single thing to do. We just get the travel point from the route GeoJSON and we have to pass it the feature, not the whole feature collection. That's what it says here. It says pass the feature uh, and we pass it the amount in kilometers, and kilometers is the, the default. Uh, default is kilometers, but it could be others. You can specify the units uh, in an options um, object here. So once we get that, then we're going to add that point onto the map. So here I add it as a circle layer. I just find this easiest. You could add it as a marker, whatever you want to do. So here I get the travel point, and this is the one from the route. So when we load up our map here, we're going to see a white circle right where it, this is on this line. Really awesome that Turf can just do this so easily. Now, if I was to go there to find Zed, uh, and he's actually 150 kilometers, I'm going to be wrong because this is not quite on. This is obviously cutting off distance because it's an inaccurate line. And so we need to actually do it with the other line if I want to be more accurate and actually find my little awesome cap. So that means that we got to, like, use the other uh, geometry here to do our analysis. But the problem is, is that this is a whole set of features and turf requires one feature. So we're going to use a couple other turf methods or one other turf method. And then we're going to like kind of reparse some of our geometry to get it so that this whole thing is going to be one big feature. 
So the first thing I do is I use turf.combine, which combines all those separate features into one. So let's go over and look at turf.combine. What it does is it combines a, a feature collection of line strings into multi-line string. So it just basically takes all those lines and makes them one big line. And you don't have to do this. I just wanted to throw in another reference to turf because this is what this set of tutorials is about. So we're going to be maximizing our turf usage. You wouldn't have to do it this way. So, uh, and then I have to do this kind of complicated bit that is probably easiest understood by actually looking at it rather than uh, me talking through it, but I'll try to just briefly talk through it anyway. So I basically then, uh, I get this merged line, which is going to be like a whole GeoJSON, which contains one feature that is called a multi-line string. And in that, I loop over all of the separate parts of that line and I concatenate them. So I make them all one big array uh, in this new one I call merged feature coordinates. And then once I have that, I replace the merged line with my merged feature coordinates. So basically now I have one big line string instead of a whole bunch of different line strings. Uh, and I can use that to pass to turf. So I had to do a little bit of messing around. It's very common you're going to have to do this when you're using turf extensively. You're going to have to reorient your geometry, squish them, put them in the right format so they're going to be able to work with turf. So once I have that, we have a very easy little function we can do. Uh, again, we use the along function, and this time we pass in our merged line. And when we pass in our merged line, we give it 150 kilometers, and we get the exact travel point. So we paste that in, and now we reload our map. And we're going to be able to find right where Z is, uh, if indeed he's at the 150 kilometer mark. And you can see they differ a fair bit. This might even be a few kilometers different and it's actually on the highway instead of being sort of off it in the bushes. So that's where that's using turf to do a little bit of analysis. We're going to have more videos like this because more emergencies are always going to happen. More fun situations going to arise where we have to do some spatial analysis and come to the rescue. And we're going to be going over all the turf functions one by one. So you get total education in doing spatial analysis with JavaScript and on live maps with real mini projects. So. Hope this helped, and I'm off to find Zed.